Hey everybody, just today I mentioned my best kind of PS5 jailbreak setup and I mentioned things like you would need such as the PS5 with 4.51 and 4 terabyte M.2 SSD drive but also I have mentioned an ESP8266 which may be a device that sometimes people may not associate with the best PS5 jailbreak setup. In this video today, I wanted just to make a quick kind of update on some of the power that you can get out of an ESP8266 device with really just about 10 to 15 minutes of free time. So I figure that there's a few things that you'll need to know if you want to create one of these for yourself. One of them is which device? Well, this is the device that I used. It's a Lalin D1 Mini. Now, these are right at this $3.70 US currency, so they're extremely cheap, and you can buy three or four of these, especially if you have a PS5 or multiple PS5s in different places in your house, and just kind of serve it up there. Now, it does take a while to get it through AliExpress, but you can obviously find some other places that sells it. Once you get the device, there's only a few things that you really need. One of them is that you'll need to come over to this project by Stooged. It's called PS5-Server. And you're just going to just simply go right here to code and then download the zip file. Once you download the zip file, we will go through the rest of the instructions together. But you'll have everything that you need and then you'll just want to copy this URL into a notepad or something like that. It will be in the description below because you are going to use it once we launch the Arduino client. And then the final thing that you're going to need is just going to be the Arduino IDE. 2.2.1 is the very latest version and it's what I'm using. So to begin, just go ahead and download and install the Arduino IDE client, and I'll meet you once Arduino is installed. Okay, now that we have Arduino, let's go ahead and go to File, and we're going to go to Open, and mine is located on my PS5, and then there's a folder called PS5 Server Main, and then I'm going to go to PS5 Server, and now I'm going to select this ps5 underscore server dot ino file and press open. So this is the code to the project. Now, in order to use this and upload this to a device, the very first thing that we will need to do is we will need to come back over here to file. And then let's go down to preferences. And then you're just going to want to make sure that you paste in this URL right here. Again, this is what was in the description and what I talked about just a few moments ago. So put that in and then press OK. Now after you do that, it will take a couple of seconds to download everything, but then you'll have a new option. So now if you go to Tools and you go to Board and then Board Manager, if you come over here and just type in a WE, then you're going to want to install this package right here, which is the ESP8266. Now, 3.12 is the latest, so I just have been using that one. So I would recommend that you use that too. So go ahead and install this package. It'll take just a few minutes to install. But once that's done, then you'll be able to have access to this option, which is if you go back into Tools and then you go down to Boards, you're going to want to select ESP8266. And then you're going to want to select this one right here, which is the Lalin Wemos E1, R2, and Mini. And so once you select that, the only other thing that you will need to do is to come back to Tools and then go to Port. And you're going to need to specify which COM port your ESP8266 is on. Now, you can find this information pretty easily by going to the Device Manager. And so like here is my example and I can see mine is going to be COM4. Now you won't need to change any of these other settings. Everything using the default works perfectly well. 
The only other thing you'll need to do from here is you can run this verify utility just to make sure that everything is okay and that everything is compiling. As you can see down here at the bottom, it says it's compiling the sketch. Now it says done compiling. And if we open up our output window here, it doesn't have any sort of errors there. So now once we're ready, just again, make sure your ESP8266 device is plugged into your computer. Obviously this you should see now at this point. And then just press this upload button and it will upload this onto your ESP8266 device. Now you can come in here if you want to and change some of these settings. So by default, we can see that it is PS5 Web AP for the access point SSID. And then it's just got a password. So let's go ahead now and let's switch over to the PlayStation 5. And let's connect up to my PS5 underscore web underscore AP and try this out and see how well it works. Okay, so from the networking group, I'm going to go down to set up an internet connection. And right there, we can see PS5 Web AP is live. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to connect to that. And since I have connected one time before, it will not ask me for my password, but the password was just password. And then obviously the DNS settings is just 10.1.1.1. Now I can come right here and I can go to advanced settings and just make sure that you put in that primary DNS as that 10.1.1. Now it's okay right here for it to not have internet access. Now again, you can configure that and turn that back on, but I just wanted a completely disconnected scenario. So now if you go to the user guide, there you go. You've got a completely offline host that will jailbreak anything from 3.00 to 4.51. So let's let this finish jailbreaking. And since this is running on a very small ESP8266 or megabyte device, it doesn't have every payload, but the payload that really matters is going to be ETA hen. So I'm just going to go ahead and load ETA in from the device. And so now I have everything that I would need and enjoy running game backups and much, much more. Now, there's a ton of benefits for having a completely offline separate web host like what we're doing with this ESP8266 device. But there's also a little bit more flexibility. So say, for example, if a brand new ETA hen comes out and maybe you don't want to wait on Stooge to update this project, well, you do have the ability to do that yourself because in this folder right here called bin2h, if you run this Python file right here, what you can do is you can convert the original binary. So these files, when they come out, they're in a .bin file. So if you happen to download this bin file and then place it in the same folder as this bin2h, you could convert that into just an h file that you can use to update the Arduino IDE project. And so that file is just located right here. So using that application, you could recreate this and just upload it back to your ESP8266 device. Or if maybe later on down the road, you found an older version works better for you and for your system, well, you could put that on your ESP8266 device because you have the full control. Well, anyway, I hope this video helped somebody out there and I'll see you on the next one. Michael out.